Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, fall cleanup for me is like having a, uh, a Ruth Canal with uh, somebody who has like bad breath giving it to you. So I could do a little bit and then I, uh, I kind of have to do something else because I just, it's just not my thing. I like to buy new toys. I like to bring home the newest adventure. I like to break it open and start start figuring out what's going on. I love to order parts for it. But the uh, closing the deals on a lot of these things kind of slows me down. I could do a little bit, but I kind of kind of get bored. I like the new. Anyway, so I was um, floating around the property and. Um, I was given this compressor compressor by one of my um, one of my uh, subscribers, and I'm his subscriber, so a YouTuber. Let's just go with that. And uh, Stony gave this to me, and he said it produces air, but um, it leaks. So got a hawk making all this noise here. Um, so first thing I did was plug it in. And it popped. There's a little breaker on my <coughs> power strip inside. And it popped the breaker. Motor buzzed a little bit first. So um, what I did is obviously I unplugged it. And I put a um, channel locks. And I turned the shaft over a little bit. And then I plugged it in again. And it kind of went a little bit. And then it popped the breaker again. So then I turned the shaft over a whole bunch of times and I plugged it in and it took right off and I'm like, oh, cool, maybe I fixed it. The, um, then it was leaking air, like no tomorrow. And this was screwed in over here um, and it was cracked. So I kind of wiggled it and it fell right off. Then I used one of those uh, fancy drill hog easy outs and I got the piece of insert out of there. Came right out by the way, real piece of cake, love those drill hogs. And I screwed this in and closed the valve and I plugged it in. And, uh, and you guys could see by the way, this is kind of arced on the end that uh, it was shorted and it. So anyway. Now it goes around and it seems to produce air. As a matter of fact, it produces air fairly quickly. But it never really gets up there. And the problem is. It's kind of leaking at the shaft seal here. Now, to take this thing off, that's where life gets interesting. You... Looks like you have to figure out how to undo this air hose. And either take the motor, take the wires off the motor, or take both sets off of here, so it's probably easy to take the wires off the motor. As you guys can see, I'm up to about 50 PSI. Give or take a little bit. Once again, this is supposedly off, but it's still climbing. I think this is, uh, this is the tank side. But it'll, um, it'll work its way up a little bit. Maybe up to about 60 there. But, uh, again, keeping all the air around the shaft. And with it not running, you can hear it really gushing out. So, here's the compressor. 
I'm of mixed mind with this thing. The issue by me is compressors really just don't go for a lot of money. Like if this thing was perfect, it's worth somewhere, I don't know, 50 bucks. If it worked perfectly, 75 if you really got somebody. Um, and I told you guys before, one, two, um, I don't know where number three is. I thought I had three up here. Plus, uh, there's another horde of compressors downstairs, including a big upright Sears and um, a couple of others. So, and, and you know, a, a couple of Porter Power pancakes, another couple of Harbor Freight pancake types. So I'm like overloaded with compressors. So I'm kind of like looking at that thing, going, "What the heck am I going to do with it?" What I'd love one of you guys to do is tell me that you live somewhere local and you're dying for a compressor and, uh, you know, have you come fetch it up. That would probably be the best thing that happens to it. I'm still um, working on what works and what doesn't work and, and so forth like that. As I'm putting things away and uh, organizing things, um, and it's it's still still a battle. I mean, some of the things I did, this modular setup is nice, but um, this kind of stuff screws it all up because you need the flashlight, you knock over the wood, or you need the magnets or the little levels, you knock things over. There's the muffler that's from the mule that's supposed to go on this thing so y you know that's that's the kind of stuff that that wrecks the kind of wrecks you kind of plays havoc the other thing that wrecks you is um I've, I've heard a bunch of you guys say it and it really really is true if you build a shop build a shop if you're building storage build storage your shop should not be for storage, and your storage should not be for your shop. I would have been better off with the garage being half the size, literally, or a third of the size, and having nothing in here except what I'm working on and my tools. And then just having a big pole barn out back for everything else. So instead of spending, I don't know, this place was just under 20, 18, 19, whatever it was, um, I could have spent a lot less money. It would have been a lot easier to heat, right, because I'm heating a 24 by 24 here, and I... Um, And all this stuff is cold, right? It goes down to 20 degrees at night. And if, let's say I'm not out here for two or three days, I mean, this stuff gets cold. You know, it doesn't get all the way to 20 or zero if it goes down to zero at night. But, you, you know, let me give you a hint. It doesn't stay 70 from the summer either. So this, this, then you got to heat up all this material. So, um, my suggestion, once again, for anybody building a shop, I would recommend going smaller rather than bigger and putting up a couple of huge of those uh, logic shelter. Or they have the um, aluminum ones. They use them for carports. I've seen a, l a lot of people uh, put them up as a carport. And then depending on your wind and snow load, reinforce them a little bit. Then I've seen them use uh, picket fences. Kind of um, like I've done in front of my... Uh, like I've, I've kind of done in front of this, right? These panels are relatively cheap. They're 
for the pressure treated ones I think they're about 30 bucks each 35 29 depends on if they're on sale these are the pressure treated ones um, so if you put up the aluminum thing and you put those around the outside um, I make make it so that they don't fall over obviously um, but also set it up so that you could take them off and walk away with them most of the times those carports are not taxable and even if they were to tax them I think a 24 by 24 is a thousand fifteen hundred depending on the quality you get so what are they gonna do tax you for a thousand or fifteen hundred you put it up and you don't say anything and then you wait and uh, if they tag you you take it down Oh, it's gone what are you gonna do and then uh, once they start leaving you alone you put it right back on up and if you got fence around the outside what's the big deal I mean in the case of this thing it's on a 12 by 12 platform but that would not be too big a deal to pick up and move around I can I can lift the platform probably I can move if it were empty I could probably move the whole thing without any problem same with this that's that's um 8 by 12 I could just move it that's like uh that's like 8 by 16 17 something like that well, folks, I'm going to let you go. Sorry, the videos, particularly today's, is not great. But i got to get some of this organization done. i got to get myself moving. I have uh, basically today, and today's more or less over, and tomorrow, then, then uh, Thursday, Wednesday night into Thursday, I guess we're supposed to get some rain. And uh, this time of year the rain and the frost the ground gets with the backhoe loader and everything else the ground kind of gets a little a little slimy and um, as you go to move things you actually start making making a mess I'm gonna probably look up some videos how you guys store your uh, your metal it's uh, you know sometimes you need like this tiny little piece of metal and you you're like, uh, I just threw all that crap away. So you don't want to, like, throw it away. But then on the other hand, how do you find anything in a, in a pile like this, especially if it snows on it? So, and, y you know, the, the challenge is always, well, I can sleep a little piece here and another couple little pieces over there. And, uh, but... Then when you need something, you got to check 400 places. I don't know, maybe there's a better way of racking up metal than I'm doing. I guess I could use uh, my L brackets, but that only works for big stuff, not really the little stuff. Ah, uh, yes, the problem with owning a hoard, you're always, uh, you're always kind of moving it about. All right, folks, once again, I want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing. Remember to keep your feet down, keep your head up, and please, please get out there and enjoy all your days. Bye now, folks.